Welcome back handymen and women to the Bulletproof Handyman Business YouTube channel. Today we're going over my top 10 scheduling tips. These are all tips that I learned the hard way over the last two and a half years of making the mistakes, trying to come up with better ways to do things. And I came up with these over time. They are proven. So if you listen to these, I think you're going to have much better luck with your scheduling and making your days go smoother. Number one, we're going to start with number 10 and go to one. And I'm going to warn you all, number one is going to be surprising. It's going to be counterintuitive and you're not going to want to follow it. I do hope that you just go ahead and follow it because if you learn the hard way, it's going to be an expensive mistake and it's going to happen multiple times if you're anything like me. It took me a while to finally learn my lesson. So the purpose of these tips and the purpose of trying to do your scheduling correctly, we've got a few goals. Number one is to set the tone and that is to make sure that the tenant is viewing us and treating us and interacting with us like a business and not just a handyman. If you follow these tips, that will set that tone. Uh, it's also to prevent last minute cancellations. And that's gonna be what number one's for actually, is preventing last minute cancellations. We're also trying to ensure their cooperation with the timing so that they're not saying, nope, I'm only available uh, after five on weekdays and on weekends. And we're trying to maxif maximize our efficiency and therefore our profits. And what are we here for if not to make profit? Finally, we're trying to keep our PMs happy. Our property managers need to remain happy. That's why they continue sending us work. So if you follow these tips, you should accomplish all of these goals and your business is going to run insanely smoother. So please pay attention to them. So we're going to start with number 10. Number 10 is prioritization. And what you want to prioritize, number one, is emergencies. Even if you need to cancel other jobs, get those emergencies done fast. And an emergency would be uh, a front door that doesn't lock, security bars on a window that have fallen off or broken off, uh, water dripping, anything that might injure a person in the house or that might cause further damage to the house. Those are going to be emergencies. And then for any particular day that you're scheduling. So let's say you're trying to schedule out this coming Wednesday. The way that you want to do it is you want to look at all the jobs that you're trying to schedule that day and you want to make sure that the first job of the day is going to be a simple job. And it doesn't mean a small job, it just means simple in terms of there isn't much variability to it and you can predict how long it will take. If you can predict how long it will take, you can get that first job scheduled and then when you go to schedule the second one, because you knew how long this one would take, you can be fairly certain that you're going to be on time for the next one. So do them simple to complex on any individual day, but make sure that you're always doing emergencies as soon as possible. Number nine is you want to consolidate the areas of town that you're doing your jobs in on any particular day, or if you can't consolidate them in one small area, you want to make sure that they're a loop. So you go here, 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 here. That way there's not much drive time. If it's all over town and you're doing a star pattern, you're going to drive way up to this side, way down to that side, back over here, back over there, and then back home. Now you've spent like three and a half, four hours driving instead of working. And those you can bill for those driving hours, but you want to be as efficient as you can because there is a window of pricing that you can be within that's going to feel fair to your property manager and the more you can give them low prices not by shorting yourself but simply by being efficient the more work they're going to want to send you and the faster you'll get home to your family so oh let me show y'all something actually real quick as far as the scheduling let me click on this so now we've got this screen up here so I want to show you all if you do have jobber that's what I use to run my business and there is a link in the description where you get 20% off for the first six months that's an exclusive discount they have for me at the moment but if you have jobber all of your jobs will show up on a map now normally my map this is not my account, this is my demo account that Jobber gave me to do these videos with. So I would have generally 30 or more jobs, anywhere from say 30 to 60 jobs open at any point in time on this map. So let's say there's a job right here, hopefully y'all can see that. What you want to do, let's say you live right here, dead center. So what you want to do is maybe you want to start right here 
and then work your way down until you're back home or you want to do some kind of loop or you want to just do all five jobs for that day all in this area and then the next day you can do all the jobs in this area and then the next day you can do all the jobs in this area so I use this functionality quite a bit I think let's see you do have to have the connect plan for that but this is very handy if you don't have jobber then of course you can just mark these on your own map there's a lot of different ways to do it but you do want to make sure you do want to make sure that you're trying to consolidate your jobs in one area of town or have a loop or some sort of system where you're not driving all day long you want the shortest drive time between jobs <laughs> so let's move on to number eight if it's exterior work that you're going to be doing one tip I have is from now on not from now on I've been doing this a while but also from now on when I have something let's say it's a gate that needs to be repaired I ask the tenants is it okay if I just stop by sometime this week whether you're home or not do I have your consent to just come over and get this fixed and leave and I'll text you you know when I'm on my way just so you know I'm on my way but otherwise do I have your consent to just show up in between some of my other jobs to knock this out if you get that consent then over the next week let's say somebody cancels on you and now you've got a two-hour open block well you can use that two-hour open block instead of not getting paid for those two hours because somebody canceled now you can shoot over here knock out that job and then go on to the next job so try not to schedule exterior work for specific days and times if you don't need to and if you do need to maybe it's in the backyard and they have dogs and they keep the dogs in the backyard so you need to schedule with them but otherwise try to get those scheduled to where you can just do them when the tenants not home because most property management companies don't mind if you're doing exterior work without the tenant present moving on number seven this is also a good time while you're scheduling with a tenant to ask them to either clean or clear things out of the way and what I mean by that is let's say you're working on their toilet replacing a toilet seat it's gonna be dirty you don't want to work on a dirty toilet seat so use the time that you're scheduling to also remind them hey if you could please clean the toilet before I come for this appointment or let's say you're fixing a patch on that you're doing a patch on the ceiling and there's a couch right below it you can let them know when you schedule hey if there's anything below the ceiling there please move it out of the way before our scheduled appointment so that I don't get things on your couch just let them know like hey I'm gonna put a tarp down and stuff obviously but if you could please move everything away from the area and that just helps you mostly with just liability and stuff so you don't accidentally break their stuff and so you're not cleaning their toilet for them and you're not moving their furniture for them that's something that they can do moving on to number six uh, multiple trips are okay so generally speaking your property management companies they're gonna have a contract with the person who owns the home and when they sign this contract when the property management takes over management of the property when that happens they're gonna have a contract that says hey anything under a certain dollar amount we're not gonna get your approval to fix they're gonna set that amount it's for most of my companies it's 350 I've seen 300 I've seen 200 I've seen 250 but it's within that range and the idea is they can send you that work order and as long as you're not gonna invoice over that dollar amount they don't have to ask the homeowner for permission to spend their money by hiring you however sometimes you're gonna get a work order that has like eight items on it eight different punch list items and it's gonna be obvious to you that they're not all gonna fit within that three hundred and fifty dollar budget now what you might be tempted to do is try to fit it all in well now you're working yourself way harder than you need to and you're having to give them a huge discount your business your rates are what they are if you can't do all eight items fairly and reasonably for under that maintenance limit do the ones that are most important like leaky sinks and stuff get those knocked out and when you start approaching the amount of work that you know work plus materials the amount that you know is approaching 350 go ahead and shut down and shut down let the tenant know that you'll be scheduling a new trip in the future and then when you get home that day invoice the work you did and ask your property manager either for a new work order with the remaining items or better yet just send them an itemized invoice so that they can just approve and then if that happens to go over 350 it's not really a big deal because they've already approved the work
So, uh, let's see, which one was that? Yeah, multiple trips are okay. So yeah, do what you can. You don't need to jump through hoops to try to get $600 worth of work done for $350. That's not your job to do. Moving on to number five, we're halfway through. Actually, real quick, I do want to remind y'all, there's a link in my description for Jobber so that you can get a free trial. I highly suggest you at least try it out and send your property managers one or two things, see how they like it. It's got a client portal on it. I run my whole business with it. And right now I have a 20% discount for the first six months. So it'll be a little cheaper for you. That's not a discount you can get otherwise unless you maybe somebody else might have the same kind of link. But if you just go to the Jobber website, you're not going to get that discount. Click on my link and get 20% off for the first six months. Also, I'm on Twitter under Handyman Hangout, like at Handyman Hangout. And what that is for is I'm trying to keep this channel purely and exclusively how to run your business, how to start and run your business. But for other stuff like just fun projects and just kind of bullshitting and whatnot, for the rest of it, I try to use Twitter and I want to get a community built up over there where we can all just be talking back and forth on Twitter, offering up advice. Maybe if you're having a problem finding a valve stem or something, you can post a picture of it on there, like send it to me and everybody else can see it. Other handymen can chime in and help you out. You can chime in and help them out when you see stuff that you've encountered before. Also in the description, there's a link to my Amazon storefront. It has literally every single tool that you will ever need for, I'm going to say, 95% of all jobs that any property manager will ever send you. And then finally, there is a link in the description to request documents from me. If y'all haven't been watching the channel, I have a lot of documents that are going to be really helpful for you starting and running your business. They're all free. I have a policy on this channel that there are no paywalls for any information that you need to start and run your business. So those are free documents. You just have to click on the link and request them and I will get them sent out to you. Now, moving on. Number five, uh, you want to use Windows when you schedule, not, not Microsoft Windows. You want to schedule Windows of arrival times. So let's say that you think you can show up at 11. You're scheduling out your day, and this third job, you're like, I think I'm going to finish these two at this time. Should be able to get there by 11. Don't schedule that job for arrival at 11. What you want to do is schedule that job for arrival between 11 a.m. and 12 p.m. The reason you're doing this is let's say you schedule for 11 and you show up at 10.50 and you knock on the door and nobody answers and you try to call them and nobody answers. So you leave because nobody's home and then you charge a missed trip fee and the tenant says, hey, he's scheduled for 11, but he's saying he was knocking on the door at 10.50. I was prepared to be there at 11. I wasn't prepared to be there at 10.50. I'm not paying the missed trip fee. Or vice versa, you schedule for 11 and you show up at 11.15 and you didn't call them. Or maybe you did call them, but they weren't able to answer their phone and they didn't see your call. And now they're going to say, well, he was supposed to be here at 11, so if he didn't show up till 11.15, that's not my problem. I was ready at 11 and he wasn't there, so I left. They'll make up lies to get out of that. So what you want to do is you want to schedule all of your jobs, whatever your arrival time you want to be, you schedule for an arrival between that time and one hour later. So you schedule for arrival between 11 and 12. Then as long as you show up somewhere within that window, then you're good to go. And if they're not there, if they back out of the appointment or they just forget or for whatever reason they're not there, as long as you can prove that you showed up within your window, you can charge that missed trip fee. And I'm going to show you all something real quick also. If you have Jobber, if you do, then I'm going to show you how to set it up so that you can set up these scheduling windows. So we're going to go to Settings, which is right here. Once you get to Settings, you're going to go to Work Settings. Click on Work Settings, and then under Work Settings, there's this little box you can click right here. This says add window after start time. So you click that box. I already have, so there's nothing for me to actually click, but click arrival window style and you want to click add window after start time. I do one hour and then come down here and there will be a save button for that. And then from here on out, every time you schedule a job inside Jobber, if you schedule it for 9 a.m., 
it's going to actually schedule you for arrival between 9 and 10 a.m. That's just a little extra handy thing that Jobber has. In case you have it, you can utilize that function. So, all right, schedule windows. Moving on to number four. Got me back on the screen, full screen, all right. Ask for details. So when you're scheduling, that's the time to ask for details. If you need to know, let's say it's a new window screen, you can say, well, what color is the frame on the existing screen? That way you can show up with the frame material that you need already. Uh, doesn't matter what the job is, I tend to always ask them. I just say, hey, sometimes the property manager doesn't give me an accurate description of the work. Would you mind just giving me a brief description of exactly what it is that's wrong and what we're needing to do to get it fixed? Because a lot of times you're going to find out that the description you received in your work order from the property manager doesn't accurately reflect what you're going to be doing, which could mean that you're going to show up with the wrong parts, the wrong materials, the wrong tools, and you're not going to be prepared. So while you're scheduling, ask for all those details. And if you think you might need some pictures, ask them to send the pictures. Uh, number three. Now these last three guys, now we're on the top three. These are all very important, like very, very important. If you don't do these, there are going to be consequences that you'll pay by your business running less efficiently and you making less money and things just not going smooth. So number three, when you're scheduling, you don't want to ask the tenant what time works best for you. That's going to be your tendency. If you haven't done this before and you're kind of just jumping in, a lot of times what you're going to think of is I'm going to say, oh yeah, hey, what day and time works best for you? What does your schedule look like? When would work for you? Don't do that because every time the tenants are going to be available weekdays after 5 p.m. and any time on the weekend. And what that's going to mean is now you're working evenings and weekends exclusively. You're a business and just like any business, if the electric company needs to come out and fix your meter, they're not going to schedule for 6 p.m. on a Wednesday because you're going to be at work. They're going to tell you hey, our next availability is Wednesday, we can come. They're going to give you like a four-hour window or an eight-hour window because they kind of suck that way. But the point is, don't ask them when they're available. You tell them when you're available. And I'll give you like a, I'll give you a short description of exactly what I would say. It's not exactly what I would say, but it's basically, I've got a copy and paste most of the time that I just put in here. And what I do is I say something like, Hey, this is Ray Duke with blank company. I just received a work order from whoever their property manager is for some repairs to your roof. And then I would follow that on with saying, my next availability is on this day for arrival between 11 and 12. Can anyone be home on that day at that time for those repairs? When you word it this way, the wording is very specific because what you've done is you've not asked them when they're available. You've said, my next availability is on this day at this time. Can anyone be home at that time for those repairs? And what that does is that puts them in the position of just simply saying yes or no to that date and time. If they say they're not, then you can follow on and say, okay, my next availability after that is going to be Thursday for arrival between 3 p.m. and 4 p.m. And you are going to have some tenants who just can't get out of work and they're only available on evenings and weekends. That's okay. Accommodate that to the extent that you can. But don't start off by offering that. Start off by saying, here's when I'm available. Can somebody be home for that? And I promise you, if you don't do this, Everybody's going to want to schedule. They're either going to say you can come at 6 a.m. because I leave for work at 7, or they're going to say you can come at 5 p.m., or they're going to say you can come on the weekend, and that's not going to work with your schedule. So, number two, get confirmation in writing. And I've mentioned this on a few videos in the past. When you're scheduling, what you want, your goal should be, if possible, to do everything via text. Because if you do it all via text and there are zero call logs, there were no phone calls between your phone and their phone, the tenants cannot make up lies about what you said. So let's say the tenant misses your appointment, but you made the appointment over the phone and you never confirmed anything in writing. So you show up for the appointment, the tenant doesn't show up for the appointment. Now you have to do a missed appointment fee because a missed trip fee because you followed through, you showed up, and it cost you money for them not to be there. So in order for you to do this fee, 
you're going to say, hey, I showed up and the tenant wasn't there. Well, then the tenant's going to say, no, 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 we scheduled for next Wednesday and you have no recourse because you didn't have anything in writing. So what I do is I make sure that it's always via text or if I can't reach them via text and I have to schedule by calling them on the phone, I always, when the phone call is done, I always let them know before I hang up, like, hey, by the way, I'm going to send you a text message after this is done confirming the appointment. If you don't mind, just reply back to that text message that you received it. That way, we're all on the same page. And then that way, when you do that, it's all in writing. So if you followed through on your end, then the tenant's not going to be able to claim anything different. And then I'm also going to show you all in Jobber, again, a feature that I use. Now, unfortunately, the account that I have for Jobber, this is my demo account that Jobber gives me to show you all how to use Jobber. It's supposed to have all the functionality, but they leave a few things out of the demos. And one of those things is up here next to this bell. There's usually going to be, if you have a Grow account, so the Grow account is the biggest account. That's the one I use. And what you're going to have up here, can you see me? Yeah, you can see me. So what you're going to have is a little text message box. And when you click on that text message box, you're going to be able to actually text them from a number that's not your number. So your tenants are not going to be getting your business phone number or your personal phone number, which they can then abuse later by texting you about. They'll just text you random stuff that's not even associated with a house they're renting just because they know you're a handyman. So if you don't want them to have your number, then if you have the Job or Grow account, you can click up here on the little text message box, which like I said, is not in my demo account. But if you get a Grow account, it'll be here type in their phone number, and then you can just type here at your computer. In fact, I have a copy and paste from a Word document that I just put in, and then I change a few lines. But you can text them from here, and again, you can say, hey, this is Ray Duke with such and such company. I received a work order from your property manager at such and such company that says we need to perform some repairs on your kitchen sink. Our next availability is going to be this Wednesday between for arrival between 11 a.m. and 12 p.m. Can anyone be home at this time for the work to be completed? You just send that text, and then when they text back, they're texting back to a number that's not your personal number. It's just a jobber number that jobber gives you. It comes back to that number. It's right there when you get home from work that day. Like if they don't answer you right away, the next day when you get home, you just open your text messages up. You see who replied. You get it all put into your schedule. And all of it is all consolidated right here because I'm telling you guys, I have about a thousand properties that I've worked on in the last two and a half years, which means, you know, many of them have been multiple trips. But that means I probably have 600 at least different tenants that I've texted, that I've scheduled with. And if all 600 of them had my phone number, it would be insane. But I do recommend that it's always in writing, whether it's on a text message from your phone, whether it's an email, if maybe if you have a way to do that, if the company gives you their email address, but try to get everything in writing because it's very rare, but every now and then you will have a tenant who claims something other than the truth. And if all of your communication is via text and none of your communication is via phone, they don't have a phone log to show any phone calls between the two of you, then your property manager can rest assured that this text log that you sent them is exactly what you said and how you said it, and that it's the tenant who didn't show up for the appointment or who said one thing when they meant another. So just keep that in mind. And then finally, number one, guys, this is very important. It's counterintuitive. You're not going to want to do it. But I'm going to tell you, do not send tenants reminders before your appointment. Don't send them a reminder 30 minutes before or an hour before or the morning of or the evening before. Don't send reminders. Some of them are going to ask you to. And if you want, you can say, hey, I'll try to, but I'm often extremely busy. Sometimes my phone shuts down in the heat because it's so hot outside and I'm working outside. You can let them know if you want to. You can say, hey, I'll try, but I can't guarantee it. I do still need for you to make sure on your end that you set your own reminders on your phone or your calendar so that you're here because I may not be able to, but yes, I will attempt to. And if you do that, it's not on you to give them a reminder. I never give reminders and here's why. Very counterintuitive, but I'm telling you right off the bat, I used to get cancellations all the time. 
My cancellations always happened either as soon as I sent the reminder or in at least in response to a text, even if it's a couple hours later, it's always in response to a reminder of the appointment that they cancel the appointment. What that means for you is you're scheduling four or five jobs a day and you're trying to be billable all day, every day. You're trying to do 200 on this one, 150 on that one, 200 on that one, 125 on this one. If somebody cancels and there's not another job right down the road conveniently located between number two and number four, if your third job cancels and there's not something in between you can do, you're now losing money. That was money you should have made that day. And I'm telling you, in my opinion, most of the time when the tenants cancel those jobs, it's just because it's inconvenient. It could be because they stayed up too late last night and they don't want to wake up for a 9 a.m. appointment. It could be because they didn't clean their house and they planned on cleaning it before you came over, but they forgot and their house is trashed and they're afraid that you're going to tell the property managers that they're not taking care of the house. It may be because they just smoked some weed in the bathroom and they're afraid you're going to smell that in the air. So if they cancel on you, let's say the morning of or the evening before, and you can't get a new job there, you can't charge a missed trip fee because no trip was missed, property managers are generally going to have a problem with like a 24-hour cancellation policy. They might be okay with anything more than 24 hours, but they're going to have an issue with cancellation policies in general, mostly because they're weak and they don't want to stand up to their tenants. But nonetheless, my advice, I will tell you this, the day that I made the decision to stop sending out reminders, I've had zero cancellations for like eight months. I mean, I've had legit cancellations where it was like they went to the emergency room and typically, you know, like the tenants feel bad about it. They'll send you a picture like from the emergency room or something. There have been a couple, but it went from having a cancellation every other week to having like three per year, almost no cancellations anymore. And the, the no cancellations started when I stopped providing reminders of the appointments. So that's all 10 guys. Let's go over them real quick one more time. Number 10, prioritize emergencies and also prioritize on any given day that you're doing the simplest jobs that you can predict the amount of time they will take. Do those first. Do the more complex jobs at the end of the day so your schedule doesn't get thrown off. Number nine, consolidate each day into different areas or different lines. And like I said, if you have Jobber, you can use that uh, routing page to actually see where all of your jobs are or the schedule page rather to see where all of your jobs are number eight uh, get consent in advance to show up and do exterior work when they're not home that's going to make it so that you have some jobs that you can do if you get a cancellation where you can shoot over and fix something and then shoot back over and pick up on your schedule uh, number seven, ask the tenant to clean or clear away anything that needs to be cleaned or cleared away so that you're not doing that work for them. Number six, multiple trips are okay. You don't have to finish everything all on one trip. If it's $500 worth of work and a $350 maintenance limit, do $300 worth of work, invoice the work, send an estimate for the rest, or ask for a new work order for the rest. It's okay to not get it all done on one trip and then cheat yourself out of money because you're trying to make a property manager happy. There are other ways to make them happy. Number five, uh, do your scheduling with windows for arrival and do make sure you say for arrival between 10 a.m. and 11 a.m. Don't say I can show up tomorrow morning 10 to 11 because they could take that to mean you're going to show up at 10 and be done by 11. For arrival between 10 and 11 is the words that you want to use. Number four, ask for any additional details. Pretend like you don't know everything that's going on already, that you don't have a clear and concise work order. Just get the tenant to give you any additional information they have. That's going to help make sure you don't show up to a job unprepared because the tenant or the property manager in their initial communications used incorrect nomenclature. Number two, uh, try to do it all in writing. If you can, have everything only in writing. And if not, then at the very least, if you have to schedule on the phone or talk on the phone, send a synopsis of what was discussed and what was agreed upon in terms of scheduling and whatnot. Send a synopsis afterwards and ask them to please reply and confirm that they received that so that everything's in writing just in case they don't show up for an appointment. 
And finally, number one is don't give courtesy reminders. You're going to want to, and I'm going to tell you, it's going to cost you money over and over until the day that you finally say, that's it, I'm done, I'm not sending out reminders anymore, and then suddenly, no more cancellations. They become extremely rare. Your whole job will be so much smoother. So that covers everything, guys. Top 10 scheduling tips. I learned these the hard way. Please take them to heart. They are going to work for you. They definitely work for me, and I've been doing this for a little while. So otherwise, I hope you all are out there killing it, and I will see you on the next one.